Hello and welcome. I'm sorry the video quality isn't as good as it normally is, because this is just a webcam and not the usual equipment, but I felt that since the rest of the crew is contributing a little something, I figured I'd do my own little top 10 of RPGs. I would like to start off with the first one I remember actually playing, which was Earth Dawn. Now, this is the second dead book, and it is the first game that I really started getting into, uh, shortly after Rookie's game, and things of that nature. But I have a lot of good memories with this, and even though I think my character kind of got screwed up on more than once in that game, it was still fun. Looking back on it, it's a lot different than what D&D is, at least at the time it was second at D&D. I like the way they did the magic system. It's not like the usual flashy stuff that's usually in D&D. It's more of a prep contain and fire when it's appropriate type thing. Next on the list, Shadowrun. The first time I played that while my friends was running in his apartment, it was a very fast paced, very chaotic, very urban feel. Fox has the fifth end book, more current, uh, cleaner rule set, still fun to play. Uh, next is the, the first uh, play game, game I played, a game that's going to be an older edition because is what I started with. Heroes Unlimited. This actually is the first RPG book I ever bought and then was pressed to run it. It's a bit more complicated than a lot of other games, a little math heavy, but it's still a decent product worth your money. I would endorse it. Next is, it's more of like a two book set because it just doesn't have the feel if you just go with one of the books. It was uh, White Wolf's uh, first release of like a high, like a super card song game, which was like the Aberrant and Trinity Line, Trinity from my known as Aeon before they got sued by UTV because the Aeon Flux. I've ran Aberrant, I've played a little bit of uh, Trinity, Aeon, whatever you want to call it. I would love to play more of it sometime, but there are so many games that's already on the slate right now that I probably ain't going to do so anytime soon. On to the next one. My favorite out of the White Wolf line, uh, the old school White Wolf, which is Mage the Ascension. I liked it a lot more than Vampire. I liked it uh, a little bit more than Werewolf. I like the way that the powers in it are not uh, static and defined like what they are in the other uh, White Wolf lines, like Werewolf, you have to and Vampire you have Disciplines, and yeah, you could combo them and everything, but Mage, it felt like you you were actually making your powers as you were as you were uh, presenting them. And I really loved the, the White Wolf line back in the day because it was it was one of the few modern settings out there that I was exposed to that I really fell in, in love with and in line with and all sorts of other things. Next is a game that filled a lot of weekdays, Saturday nights, yeah, a lot of, a lot, a lot of time, which is Big Eyes Small now. Um, this is second edition. I started with first edition from one of my friends, and he ran that game. I think I was in that game for close to three years. It's, it's a very long running game. I, I loved it, enjoyed it. Another one of those games I would love to pick up again and, and run with, but not the cards right now. Next, it's a game that Fox and I pretty much uh, went into about the same time. A very, very fun game, very dynamic, which is the old Iron Claw. It's another game that filled a lot of weekends, a lot of good memories. I think the one memory that sticks out that wasn't so good was the wallet incident, which if you ever run into Fox, he could tell you what that, what that was all about. Next game is another game that uh, I was into before like the whole anime craze really took off within gaming. The original that I remember, I mean there probably was others before, but this was the one I was supposed to do first. This one, Mecton. This one in particular, Mecton Plus. I start out with Mecton 2. Actually, Mecton Plus is the addition to Zeta. I forgot to get that one out. That was my bad. <sighs> Can't edit that one out now. This is raw footage. Here we go. It's a game that uh, used a D10 for just about everything. D6s every now and then, like in damage rolls. So, really easy. Keep all your dice on you that you needed for the game. Played it whenever. Anyways, next on the list. And I'm kind of breaking the rules a little bit because it's, you know, White Wolf yet again. But it's the newer rule system and everything. Cleaned up a lot better. Everything's a lot more balanced. I wouldn't say totally balanced, but a lot better than where it was at before. I do have my favorites within the genre. Fox is probably going to link their review to it somewhere up here, along with the 
probably also the review to Mummy as well. Really, really fun game. Really, really good. I, I love having options. My favorite system out of everything is Prego Surprise Fox and a lot of other people. But my favorite system, DreamPod 9. I just love the way the mechanic works in this. Really, really good. The DreamPod 9 does uh, games like Heavy Gear, Jovian Chronicles, Core Command, and Tribe. I would highly recommend it. Uh, if you're if you're just not getting into gaming and everything, my suggestion would be, you know, find find a system that that has a core set, like a World of Darkness, Dream Pod 9. That way you get familiar with that core well and can branch out to what really floats your boat. Now there's one I forgot to put into the list here, and it, it is a great game, and I really, really enjoy it. One that will probably be on the top 10 list when I get around to being able to play it instead of just running it, Tephra. It was a successfully kickstarted RPG. They're still, they're still putting out the first wave of books and everything out. Really enjoyable. Uh, if you get a chance, please support these guys. I'm kind of getting on the ground floor of when you when you buy the books because there's there's not there's not a lot of books out for it, so you're not having to spend a lot of cash to catch to catch up as far as like you know if you're trying to get all the options of a setting or whatever. You're spending a lot less in rare if you were trying to catch up with like World of Darkness, New World. It has a special little treat. I am going to show the train wreck game system of my collection, one that had. A lot of high hopes for I was really trying to get into it and everything, really trying to push on my friends. Either I kind of screwed up as far as interpreting some of the rules, or its magic system is really, really unexplainable. Anima. The setting, awesome. The the way they present the characters, really good. The the artwork, the artwork, really, really great. But the if if I'm not grasping part of the the rule set, then you know, my fault. But I really really hope that they could catch us on their feet and clean it up, maybe release some around it and everything to to either interpret the rules better or to pretty much stop the train wreck that is its magic set system, which is the only fault it really has. But when so much of it relies on it, it's it's you know, unsalvageable. This is my video. Um, like it, whatever. Anyways, out.